Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you're doing great. Welcome to today's class. It's our 11th lesson on a given form 4 mathematics topic called differentiation. So we are looking at our fifth aspect on this particular topic, which is called application of differentiation in calculation of a velocity and acceleration. So we start by looking at what we call a velocity. So mathematically, velocity is given by the change in displacement divided by the change in the time are taken for that particular change in displacement to happen. Of course, velocity is usually denoted by a small v. Then the change is denoted by a delta or sometimes we also I use small d to denote a change. Then displacement is denoted by uh, s. Then the change in time, of course, this will be denoted by delta or simply a d. Then, of course, time is denoted by a small t. Therefore, we can say that velocity uh, can be given by the change in displacement divided by uh, the change in the time taken. Or simply put, velocity is given by a ds, that is the change in a displacement, divided by uh, the change in the time taken. Therefore, this is the formula that you need uh, to remember, that velocity will always be given by uh, the change in displacement, which is uh, ds, divided by uh, the change in the time taken, which is dt. Then in terms of um, the units, uh, we can actually derive the units for uh, velocity, whereby we are saying that we'll take the units of displacement, we divide by the units of time. The unit for displacement, of course, is the meters. Remember, displacement and distance are one and the same thing, except that uh, displacement is a vector quantity. That is, it has both magnitude and direction, whereas a distance is a scalar quantity, meaning that for distance, we only consider the aspect of, uh, that is, its magnitude, but ignore the aspect of uh, the direction. Then, of course, the units for time is the seconds. Therefore, we can say that a velocity can be given by meters per second or applying the loss of indices. We know that whenever you have 1 over a power n, this is the same as saying a to the power of negative n. Therefore, it means that I can take this s to the numerator. So this will be given by meters second. Then, of course, this was, uh, if it is second, it means it was power 1. Therefore, when it goes to the uh, numerator, this will become power negative 1. That is whenever the power was positive. If you take it to the numerator, the power changes to uh, negative. Therefore, we can say that uh, the units for velocity. So you can say uh, the units uh, the units of uh, velocity. The units of velocity will be given by meters per second. Or you can also denote it as meters second power negative one then we look at um, the second uh, term which is called acceleration so acceleration uh, mathematically is given by the change in velocity divided by the change in the uh, time taken so acceleration we denote it by a small a the change of course is a delta or we can also use small d then velocity is denoted by v then the change in time, this can be given by delta or simply a small d. Then, of course, the time is small t. Therefore, we can say that acceleration a can be given by a delta a v, that is change in velocity, divided by a delta a t, which is the change in time, which can also be given by acceleration is equals to. So instead of a delta or the change, we can use small d. So this one is equals to uh, dv, that is the change in velocity, divided by uh, dt, that is the change in the time taken. Therefore, this is the second formula that you need to remember whenever you're dealing with acceleration. That acceleration will be given by the change in velocity divided by the change in time taken. So to get the units for acceleration, we'll take the units for velocity, we divide by uh, the units for time. Clearly, we've shown that the units for velocity is meters per second. Therefore, this will be meters per second, then divided by the units for time, of course, is the uh, seconds. So this can be written as meters uh, per second, then divided by uh, the seconds, which can also be written as meters over second, then divided by 
uh, the second. Remember, whenever you divide means uh, you are going to multiply with the reciprocal. So this is the same as saying uh, meters per second, then multiplied by the reciprocal of S, which is the same as S over 1, will be 1 over S. So this will give us meters divided by seconds times seconds, you'll get seconds uh, squared. Therefore, we can say that the units for acceleration, the units of acceleration, uh, the units for acceleration uh, will be given by, so you can talk of meters per second uh, squared, or on applying the loss of indices, that is one over a power n is the same as a to the power of negative n. This one means that I can take this one to the numerator, so the sign of the, uh, that is uh, the power will change. So it means that similarly, if I have meters second power two, if I take it, this one to the numerator, it will become meters second power negative uh, two. So you can talk of meters per second squared or meters second to the power of negative two. So those are the units for acceleration and uh, velocity. So the key things you need to note here are these two formulas, that velocity is equal to change in displacement over time, and acceleration is equal to a uh, change in velocity divided by the time taken. So next we look at um, what we call uh, the maximum height. So at the maximum height or what we call the maximum distance or at the maximum uh, displacement, remember we said the only difference between displacement and uh, distance is the aspect of uh, displacement is a vector quantity that is, it has both magnitude and direction, whereas distance is a scalar quantity. That is, it only has a magnitude, but no direction. But in terms of uh, the formulas, uh, they will be almost the same. So at maximum height or at maximum displacement or at maximum uh, distance, the velocity will always be equal to zero. So if we consider the that is uh, the graph of uh, displacement uh, against time, which can also be given as the graph of the distance, uh, the distance against uh, time. If we want to get the maximum height, remember the maximum displacement or the maximum height will occur between the points B and C. This is where the body is at the maximum displacement. So this is the maximum uh, displacement. Uh, this is what we are calling the maximum, uh, maximum uh, displacement or at the maximum distance, uh, maximum uh, distance, or what we are calling the maximum height. It is occurring between this particular point, the point uh, B, C. Therefore, we can compute the velocity at this particular point. Therefore, we can say that the velocity, uh, the velocity at maximum displacement, the velocity at maximum uh, displacement, the velocity at maximum displacement, which is also called the maximum height, or simply put, the maximum uh, distance, uh, which is uh, between the point uh, B and C, will be given by, so this will be velocity between the points uh, B and C. But we know that velocity is equal to change in displacement divided by uh, the change in the time taken. Therefore, we'll talk of the change in displacement between point BC, then divided by the change in time between point BC, which will be equal to the displacement at point C minus the displacement at point uh, B, divided by uh, the time at point uh, C minus the time at point B. So the displacement between uh, B and C will be given by the following. So the displacement at point C, which is uh, this particular point here, clearly the displacement will be 10 meters. So we'll have 10 meters, then of course minus the displacement at point B is still uh, 10 meters. Uh, that is when you follow this graph. So this one is still 10 meters divided by the time at point C was uh, 8 seconds. So this is 8 seconds minus the time at point B was 4 seconds. So minus 4 uh, seconds. So this will be uh, given by the following. So we are going to have 10 minus 10 will get zero uh, meters, then divided by eight minus four will get four seconds. So of course, this one will give us a zero over four, we'll still get zero 
uh, meters per second. So clearly you can see that at maximum height or at maximum distance or at maximum displacement, our velocity will be equal to zero. That is why we are saying that at maximum height or at maximum distance or at maximum displacement, our velocity will always be equal to uh, zero. Therefore, we can conclude and say that uh, at S maximum, at maximum height, uh, that is at maximum displacement or what we call at H maximum, at the maximum uh, height, this is what we need to note, the velocity, which is always given by the change in displacement of a change in time, uh, will always be equal to zero. The reason being at maximum height or at maximum uh, displacement, the change in displacement will always be equal to zero. Therefore, zero divided by the change in time, the final solution will be zero. So at maximum height or at maximum displacement or at maximum distance, uh, the velocity must always be equal to zero. So next, we look at what we call initial conditions. Initial conditions are simply those conditions when the body has not started at uh, the motion. That is when the body is passing a fixed point uh, it can be a fixed point P or a fixed point O. So for example, the initial conditions are represent the conditions at point A. That is when the motion of the body has not started. So clearly you can see at point A, the time covered is uh, zero seconds. At the same time at point A, there is no displacement which is being uh, covered. So of course that means that the velocity will also, will also be equal to zero because we are talking of uh, a stationary uh, body yeah, a body which has not started its motion. So at initial conditions, the time will always be equal to zero. You can see time at point A will be zero seconds. Huh? Then the displacement will always be equal to zero. So clearly, you can also see on the displacement axis, there is no distance which has been covered. Therefore, the displacement will always be equal to zero. So you can say that at the point A, at the point A, which is representing the initial uh, that is initially or the initial conditions before the body starts its motion, the time covered is zero seconds and also uh, and also the displacement covered is also zero uh, meters and at the same time, the velocity of the body is also zero meters per second. So whenever you hear of initial conditions, just know that uh, the time must always be equal to zero, the displacement must always be equal to zero then in some cases, the velocity will be equal to zero meters per uh, second. Then um, next, we look at um, a graph of uh, velocity against time taken, which can also be taken as a graph of speed, uh, the speed against the time taken. Remember, the only difference between speed and velocity is that a speed is a scalar quantity, that, it, that is, it only has... Uh, the aspect of uh, magnitude, uh, but no direction. But for the case of velocity, this is a vector quantity, which means that for velocity, we check for both uh, magnitude and direction. It has both magnitude uh, or size and uh, direction. So that is the only difference between these two. But in terms of the graph, they will behave in the same way. So the way speed time graph will behave is the same way the velocity a time graph is going to behave. Now, we are saying that at maximum velocity or at maximum speed, the acceleration will always be equal to zero. Now, if you look at velocity time graph, um, that is the velocity will be maximum between the points B and C. Therefore, this is what you are calling the Vmax or the maximum uh, velocity or what you are calling the uh, maximum speed. This is where the body has uh, the largest possible speed, in this case, which is 10 meters per second. Therefore, we can compute the acceleration. Let's find the acceleration of the body at maximum velocity. Acceleration at uh, maximum maximum uh, velocity or the acceleration at maximum speed. Uh, the acceleration at maximum uh, speed. Let's compute it and see what we get. So, of course, uh, this will be equal to, we say the acceleration is a change in velocity divided by the change in the time taken. So, of course, when it is maximum, it is maximum between point B and C. 
Therefore, we'll talk of change in velocity between point BC uh, divided by change in time between point BC, which will be equal to the velocity at C, that is the final velocity, minus the initial velocity, which will be velocity at point B, divided by the final time, which is time at C, minus the time at B, that is the initial time. So this will be equal to the velocity at C. Clearly, if you read the velocity at C from the velocity axis here, it will give you 10 meters per second. So this is 10 meters per second minus velocity at B. It is still at 10 meters per second. So minus 10 uh, meters per second, then divided by the change in time. So the time at the point uh, C is 8 uh, seconds. Uh. So we are having uh, 8 seconds then minus the time at B is uh, 4 seconds. So this will be minus 4 uh, seconds. So this will be equal to uh, 10 meters per second minus 10 meters per second. This will give us 0 meters per second divided by 8 minus 4. You're going to get uh, 4 seconds. So of course, this will still give us uh, 0 meters per second squared. That is why you are saying that at maximum velocity or at the maximum speed, the acceleration will always be equal to zero. So clearly you can see at point BC where the velocity or speed is maximum, the acceleration is equal to uh, zero. Therefore, we can conclude and say that at maximum. So we are saying that at uh, maximum uh, velocity, that is at Vmax, at Vmax, or what we call at the speed max, at the maximum uh, speed at the maximum speed, the acceleration A, which is equal to change in velocity over change in time, will always be equal to zero. The reason is because at the maximum velocity, there is no change in velocity. So dv dt is zero, as we have seen here. There is no change in velocity. 10 minus 10 is equals to uh, zero. The next, we look at um, when the body is at rest or when a body is uh, stationary. It means that such a body is actually not moving. So the velocity of such a body will always be equal to zero. Or simply put, the body is at rest or is not moving. For example, at this particular point here, when the motion has not started, this particular body is at rest. It is at rest or it is stationary. Similarly, at this particular point here, when the body has uh, completed its motion, the body is also at rest. The body is at rest. You can see at this particular point, if you read from um, this particular axis, clearly you can see that the velocity will be equal to zero. Also, initially, the velocity is also zero at point A. This is the zero uh, meters per second. So the same case applies because there is no also change in displacement. Therefore, we can say that at rest, when the body is uh, at rest or when the body is uh, stationary uh, when the body is stationary or you can say when the body is not moving uh, when the body is not uh, moving this is what happens uh, the, there is no change in velocity that is change in displacement will be zero meaning that uh, also the velocity which is equals to change in displacement over change in time taken will also be equal to uh, 0 divided by dt. So this one will also will clearly give us 0. Therefore, the velocity, which is a ds dt, will always be equal to 0. That is whenever we are dealing with a body that is in a state of uh, rest. So remember, if, if also you throw a stone upward, this will be the motion. When you uh, throw a stone upward, it moves, it gets to a maximum point, then it starts turning back. So when the stone or any body that is thrown upward, when it reaches at this particular maximum point, this is H uh, max, it gets to a state of rest. So it rests here before it starts moving back. So whenever it is at rest, it means that at, a, at that particular point, the velocity, which is ds over dt, will give you uh, zero. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you're new to the channel, kindly hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.